Since we are at that point in the offseason where there isn't really too too much to talk about just because we're like one day away from free agency, it's kind of the quiet part and that's why I wanted to take the time to make this video giving you guys my expectations for the Detroit Red Wings and most importantly a lot of their younger players heading into next season and I know a lot of people are just subscribed for you know my insight on every team in the league but you know sometimes I do like to make videos about my favorite team because obviously they're a team that I'm passionate about, they're a team I know the most about because I watched every single one of their games last year with the exception of a couple so with that being said let's get right into this video i'm going to be talking about everything to do with the red wings heading into next season and ultimately giving you guys my expectations for the team so starting off just doing a quick little recap of the team last season the 2018-19 detroit red wings they finished the year with a 32 40 and 10 record seventh in the atlantic division and i really can't see them getting too too much better than that i think they'll probably have a couple more wins but i still think they're probably going to be the seventh best team in the atlantic division next season the leading point score was dylan larkin with 73 points leading goal scorer was also Larkin with 32 goals and I see much of the same of that you know happening again next year maybe Mantha will be leading the way in goals but I definitely think the leading point guy will be Dylan Larkin for many more years now just talking about some notable rookies that played for the Red Wings this past season Michael Rasmussen who played pretty well Philip Hronik who I was most impressed with out of any of the rookies and then Dennis Chalowski who had a really hot start to the season but then kind of cooled off and spent some time in the minors which I definitely think is going to help him and I think Philip Hronik and Dennis Chalowski both will be mainstays in the Detroit Red Wings top 60 core you know heading into next season and just you know first off looking at Philip Peronik I was super impressed with him he's a 21 year old defenseman he was a second round pick 53rd overall by the Red Wings in 2016 and I just think his offensive upside is through the roof his potential to be a power play quarterback I'm very excited about it he played in 46 NHL games and had 23 points as a defenseman those are some really really solid numbers and I could honestly see him being a 35 to 40 point defenseman next year especially if he is you know quarterbacking the first or even second unit power play he also played 31 games in the american hockey league had 24 points down there i'm just super pumped about him and i think he will be a mainstay not even just in the top six but definitely in the top four you know the top two pairs for the detroit red wings next year now looking at the other rookie defenseman for detroit that laced up for the majority of the season dennis jalowski played 52 games seven goals nine assists for 16 points was a minus 20 but you know you expect that from a young defenseman on a really bad team and i think he can only get better from here on out like I said earlier in the video, he had a really hot start to the year, but then kind of cooled off and found himself playing 25 games with Grand Rapids down in the American Hockey League, where he had 12 assists for a total of 12 points, had an even plus minus, and had two assists in the five playoff games that Grand Rapids played. So I think him going down there, getting his confidence back, is really going to, you know, bode well for him heading into next season. So I'm pretty excited. I think the future of the decor is really looking up, especially when you consider we just drafted a defenseman six overall in Maurice Sider, who can probably play in the NHL sooner rather than later, just straight based off of his size and you know how he played against NHL talent in the world championships but that's you know a topic for later on in the video and now the other rookie that I wanted to talk about that played the year with the Red Wings is Michael Rasmussen. So Michael Rasmussen was the ninth overall pick by the Red Wings in the 2017 NHL draft and he had an interesting year he got off to a really slow start after having a bomb preseason and a really good development camp but then he kind of picked it up and started you know putting in a little bit more points later on in the season. He played in 62 games had eight goals and 10 assists for 18 points points. 29 penalty minutes and was a minus eight he's a physical guy and I think his role for Detroit and where he could really thrive is kind of a third line checking scoring role but then being a power play specialist kind of like what James Van Riemsdyk was for many many years with like the Toronto Maple Leafs and obviously still with the Philadelphia Flyers as a guy who just parks out front he has really good hands he has great hand-eye coordination and it's able to finish around the net and I think him on a power play with you know playmakers like Tara Hirose in the future goal scorers like obviously Philip Sedina and then you know guys like Larkin and Mantha I think he really does have the potential to be a 20 goal scorer in this league and I think that's why Detroit did draft him and I do think he had a really solid rookie season and I think he definitely will you know improve on that and get a little bit better next year so the next thing I wanted to touch on is does Maurice Sider play in the NHL next season and before I get into this I just want to say the background video or just some random highlights from junior of uh, Philip Zadina obviously Michael Rasmussen and then some of Maurice Sider his are a little bit harder to find because he played over in Germany but there is some in this video because obviously I can't post you know NHL content but nonetheless getting back to Maurice Sider I think there's a very, very strong possibility that we do see him play in the NHL for a good chunk of next year with the Red Wings. I mean, we saw how he played in the World Championships. He uses his skill and size very, very well. And I think there is a potential that he gets a role with the Red Wings, you know, especially since they're a rebuilding team. They're not trying to compete right now. And they're a team that is very weak on the back end. And, you know, having young defensemen in there like Dennis Chalowski, Philip Hronik, and then obviously Maurice Sider, I think, you know, that would really bode well in terms of just building their confidence and putting trust 
in them, you know, into the future. And I think Steve Yasterman knows that this is a rebuilding team. He wants to let the young kids play. So if I had to go out and guess, I think we will see a little bit of Maurice Sider in the NHL next season. Now, another topic I wanted to quickly touch on is does Philip Zadina play in the NHL next season? So obviously, I think the expectations after last year that he was going to play in the NHL after he was drafted, but obviously Detroit, you know, decided to play him in the American Hockey League, which I think was a smart move. I think it really helped his confidence. He played 59 games down there, had 16 goals and 19 assists for a total of 35 points. You know, I think a lot of people expected him to put up a little bit better numbers in the American Hockey League, but he was only a 19 year old. And I think if he's in the NHL playing with a lot more talented guys and, you know, really being in a role to succeed on the power play, you know, set him up in that one timer position, I think he really will be in prime position to do well. Did play in nine NHL games with the Wings in this previous season, and it seemed like he got better every game. He got more comfortable, did end up scoring his first NHL goal, which is really nice to see. And if I had to answer this, I think 100% Philip Zadina will be a mainstay for the Red Wings in the NHL next year. Now taking a look at some of my player stats predictions for the Red Wings next year, and this is all just hypothetical if they do all play in 82 games. I know players will miss games with injury. I know players will miss games with suspension. You know, people won't play in all 82 games. Some might, some may not, but this is kind of just their points per 82 games, if that makes any sense. So I have Larkin leading the way, 30 goals, 50 assists for 80 points, cracking the 80 point mark for the first time in his career. He had 73 points last year. He did miss a couple of games, and I think if he does stay healthy, we could really see him up there around a point per game this season and next I have Anthony Mantha finally having that breakout season and becoming an elite goal scorer 35 goals 25 assists for 64 60 points I think he really is capable of that he was you know scoring at a pretty decent rate per game this year but he did miss a lot of time with that hand injury so hopefully he stays away from fighting and focuses more on putting the puck in the net Andreas Athanasiu I have him 28 goals 32 assists for 60 points not being a 30 goal scorer again but getting more assists and still being up there you know around the 60 point mark and then I have Tyler Bertuzzi 20 goals 31 assists for 51 points I'm a big fan of Tyler Bertuzzi I think he can be very valuable for Detroit in terms of being like an agitator who can still score goals so I'm excited to see how he plays next year and then I have Philip Hironik defenseman I was talking about him earlier in the video nine goals 33 assists for 42 points that might be a little bit high but I think if he is quarterbacking the number one or two power play unit and still putting up five on five points like he was last season we could really see him up there around 40 points and then finishing it out I have Philip Zadina 20 goals 20 assists for 40 points I really think he can be a 2020 guy you know in his first full NHL season and maybe even do better than that and have his name in contention for the Calder Trophy that would be pretty nice to see as especially for, you know, the Red Wings organization and all the Detroit fans. But all in all, I think we have the makings of a really good forward group there. I think, you know, the focus in the next couple of years should just be still building up that blue line and, you know, maybe building up the forward depth a little bit and getting rid of those bad contracts. And then especially trying to find a goaltender that can lead us into the future because that is really the only spot that we lack prospects at is the goaltending position. Now taking a look at my lineup predictions for the Red Wings heading into next season. And as I'm recording this, I completely forgot about Tara Hirose. So I apologize for that. I'm going to let you guys know where I have him filling in here soon. But the first line, I think it should be Bertuzzi, Mantha, and Larkin. They showed a lot of good chemistry towards the end of last season. Tyler Bertuzzi was scoring at a really good rate. Same with Mantha, and you know, Larkin was consistent throughout the whole year. So I think the dynamic of those three really will make a consistent and really solid first line. Second line, I have Athanasiu, Nielsen, and then Zadina. But if I had to put Hiroshi in here, I think I would probably move Athanasiu to the center spot and then have Hiroshi on the wing for an Athanasiu, Hiroshi, and Zadina line. Obviously not, you know, the biggest and most physical line, but I definitely think their offense would make up for it. So that's where I would have Tyra Hirose probably slotted in there on the second line somewhere. And then I have Helm, Glenn Denning, and Rasmussen, but obviously if I have Hirose on the second line, Nielsen would probably slide down, and then that would bump Glenn Denning down to the fourth line, and then probably bump Dilharose out of the lineup. So I kind of messed it all up with forgetting Hirose, but nonetheless, hope you guys can, you know, forgive me for that. So Helm, Glenn Denning, Rasmussen, and then Abdul Kader, Dilharose, and Witowski, and then I have Valeno and Svechnikov with question marks, because I don't really know what to expect from them I'm not quite sure if Joe Valeno is going to play in the NHL I think he is going to see a lot of time in the American Hockey League with Grand Rapids kind of like the year that Zadina had and then probably play his nine NHL games you know just like Zadina did as well and I think that can be really good for Joe Valeno just to see how he adapts to professional hockey and then have Svechnikov obviously he had an injury that had him out the whole season I'm not quite sure how his recovery process is going I don't think 
think he is slated to be ready for training camp, but I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me on that. But if he is healthy, then I could see there being a spot in the lineup for him. So all in all, I think we have the makings of a pretty decent forward core. But now let's move on to the defense pairings. So on the back end, I have the first pairing being Trevor Daly and Mike Green. I don't really see anything changing there unless one of them is injured. But Detroit's defense and their veteran defensemen have struggled with injury last year especially. So I think there is a good chance we see some of them injured. But when healthy, I think Daly and Green will be that top pairing. Then on the second pairing, I have Philip Hironik and Danny DeKaiser. I don't really want to put two, you know, young guys together, even though that is what I did on the third pairing. But I think Hironik with DeKaiser on that second pairing, you know, would be a pretty solid top four with Daly and Green. So I think Hironik has the potential to be on that top pairing, but I wouldn't want to throw him into the fire just yet. And then I have Dennis Chalowski and I have Maurice Sider in there. I do think he is going to play a lot in the NHL just strictly because of his size. And I think he is, you know, one of the more NHL ready players to come out of the first round. So that's why I have him there. And then question marks, I have Libor Shulak who played a little bit in the NHL to start last season, but that's because there were so many veteran defensemen for Detroit injured. Then I have Joe Hicketts and Nick Cronwall if he does decide to return. And then in goal, obviously Jimmy Howard and Jonathan Bernier. Don't really see anything changing there. And I think if Jimmy Howard can play like he did last season, and then maybe Jonathan Bernier has a little bit of a bounce back year, that can be a pretty solid one two tandem and net to you know, be able to keep them in some of these games. But now finishing out the video with my final predictions for the team heading into next season. The record, I have them at 35 wins, 38 losses, and 9 overtime losses for once again 7th in the Atlantic Division. Like I said at the start, I think they're going to have a couple more wins, be a little bit better, and most definitely a lot more fun to watch than last year. So I'm looking forward to it, even though we're still a rebuilding team. I want to see how all these young players do. Then leading goal scorer, Mantha with 35, and leading point scorer, Larkin with 80, but you guys saw that in the player stats predictions. So yeah, my expectations for Detroit heading into next season, not too high. Like I said, you know, maybe a couple more wins than last year, but you know, what my main focus is, it's just seeing how all these young players develop and ultimately how Steve Yasmin does in his first year, you know, at the helm for Detroit. I'm super excited about that and I really do think the rebuild is going very well so far. So that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. I apologize if you aren't a fan of the Red Wings because this video probably doesn't interest you too much, but I worked really hard on this and obviously I am passionate about the Red Wings. So if you guys could go down there and smash the like button, it would be greatly appreciated. Let's try to hit like 300 likes on this video and look forward to a lot of videos regarding free agency and you know how things things work out in the next couple of days and with that being said i hope you guys all enjoyed today's video if you did please make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for daily nhl content and i will see you guys all in the next video